If there are other entities out there that feel like they need to sue us because we've stood up for kids, then, you know, I guess they can do that. Navigating the legal minefield that is Senate Bill 150. That's what JCPS is still trying to do. This is Wave News at 11. I'm John Bolton at the JCPS Board Policy Committee. Talked about two different enforcement interpretations of the new bill that bans gender affirming care. They went in with the goal of choosing one to recommend to the school board, but instead decided to let them look at both versions. Wave News reporter David Ochoa has more on that. John, version one follows Senate Bill 150 a little bit closer than version two. Version two contradicts the law in two significant areas. It's really important that the school board members see us. A crowd gathers outside the Van Hoos Education Center, holding pro-LGBTQ signs and banners, waiting to hear the JCPS Board Policy Committee's plan for Senate Bill 150. The Policy Committee will be considering uh, different versions, potential uh, versions of board policies to present to the full JCPS Board of Education. The law bans gender-affirming care for transgender students in Kentucky schools. It also restricts which bathrooms transgender students can use and doesn't require teachers to use preferred pronouns. The committee talked about two versions on how to enforce the law in the district. Version one follows the law more closely, while the second version has two major conflicts with it. What version two would do would be in at least two instances, direct conflict with the I would say it recognizes federal law, including the Constitution, the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, and Title IX, and it's really SB 150 that is contradicting the law. Committee Chair Chris Kolb is pushing for JCPS to go with the second version, which he believes better protects transgender students from being intentionally misgendered, among other things. JCPS's lawyer recommended version one, but he says he expects the district to be sued regardless of which version they choose. So Kolb says, why not go with the version with more protection for students? To me, personally, it makes sense that we say, well, that's a given. There's nothing really we can do about that, given the situation that we've been put in. So what do we think is best for our students? And let's use that to, to make our decision. Instead of choosing a single version to recommend to the school board, the committee decided to send both versions, along with short explanations from each member with their thoughts. The next school board meeting will talk about the policies at, on July 25th. The public will be able to make comments there. The board has until August 15th to make a decision. If you'd like to read both versions of the policy, you can find a link to them on wave3.com. David Ochoa, Wave News.